Hey everyone, we're going to take a look at safely storing password data or any other sensitive data in Couchbase using the Go programming language. So just for some context, you never want to store uh, plain text password data in your database. Doesn't matter what type of database you're using. You always want to hash that data. And I'm not saying encrypt it, I'm saying hash it. Uh, so the popular library to use uh, for any programming language is some kind of bcrypt library and that's going to be exactly what we're using. Uh, so on my machine, well, not on my machine, somewhere on my network, I do have Couchbase running. Uh, we're going to be using a bucket called example. Feel free to use whatever you'd like uh, for this example. Uh, we're also going to be using two libraries. We're going to be using uh, the bcrypt package, and we're going to be using uh, the gocb package, which is the Couchbase Go SDK. Um, so using your terminal, uh, the first thing we want to do is, well, we probably want to get those two, de two dependencies. Uh, so the first dependency is the go dependency and we could actually say um, go get and then paste in that URL and well I already have it so it finished pretty quickly uh, you also want to go to bcrypt and you want to copy that URL and you also want to do the same so go get and then paste so again I already have it so it, it finished rather quickly uh, and, and note that I am in my go path so we're going to create a new project. So we're going to say make directory and I'm going to call it hash project and I'm going to navigate into it and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this file main.go. Uh, this is going to be a very simple project. It's basically what we're going to do is we're going to insert data uh, with a bcrypted password and then we're going to read that data with a bcrypted password and we're going to compare against it to make sure that our plain text password that maybe a user has submitted through a HTTP, HTTP request matches it. Um, so it's good for uh, validating user login. So I'm going to open this project uh, with my editor. I am going to be using Atom by GitHub and it does have a lot of different plugins installed for linting and error checking and things like that. One of which is it's going to automatically import libraries as, as I use them. Um, I will visit the top uh, so that way you can take a look at see what was imported, uh, but I won't be manually doing that. Uh, my plugins will be doing that. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to say package main. We want to create our main function. And we want to establish a connection to Couchbase. So we can do that by saying cluster. Uh, we're not going to worry about the errors. We're going to just ignore those. But we're going to say gocb.connect. And we're going to provide Couchbase colon slash slash and then uh, whatever your host name is. So I'm going to go back to my web browser. I'm going to copy my host name, uh, which does not include the port. I'm going to paste it in. If you're like me using Chrome, chances are you got the HTTP, HTTP part of it as well. Make sure you remove that, otherwise you're going to get errors. Uh, but go ahead and save. Uh, it's saying that I have an error because I'm not using cluster yet, but I will be. Uh, with the connection to the cluster established, I want to say bucket. I'm going to ignore the error again, but I'm going to say cluster dot. Uh, open bucket. My bucket that I'm using is called example and the password is non-existent so it's just going to be an empty password. Uh, so we do have a connection to our Couchbase instance and our Couchbase bucket as of now. Uh, we will need to worry about what we're saving into Couchbase so we can actually create a uh, Go data structure for that. So we're going to say type, we're going to call it account and we're going to say struct and we're going to determine what we want to save. So we're going to save a type, uh, for example, and it's going to be of the type string, and there's going to be a JSON annotation to it. So we're going to say uh, inside of our database, it's going to look like type, and we're going to omit it if it's empty. We're also going to say we want to have a username, which is also of type string with a JSON annotation here saying it's going to be called username in the database. And then finally, we're, we're just keeping this simple. We're going to have one that's, that's called password. Perfect. So we do have an account structure uh, that we can use when it comes to saving our data. So now let's worry about uh, populating that, that. So we're going to say account equals, and it's going to be an, of, a, of type new account. The type is going to be, uh, let's, let's call it account in lowercase. We're going to have a username. And that's going to be, let's call it Enroboy. This is all hard-coded stuff. Chances are 
uh, this this information will come in through some kind of HTTP request and you will parse that out and use that instead uh, but this is just a very basic example and then finally we have password uh, which we're gonna leave as blank for now and we're gonna save it uh, so we will need to hash our password our password is of course gonna be hard-coded here as well for simplicity uh, but we can't just go ahead and add it uh, to line 17 we have to use the bcrypt function which does return two results an error and a success so what we want to do is we want to say hash we're going to ignore the error uh, when we hash our password but we're going to say bcrypt dot and we're going to say generate from password it's going to be of type byte slice and we're going to pass in a plain text password let's call it my password what we also want to do is we also want to pass in a cost. Uh, so a cost is a numeric value, and it's a value that determines how many times you're going to hash this password. The more times you hash it, the stronger it's going to be, but also the slower this algorithm, algorithm is going to run. So 10 generally is a good number to use. So we can save it, and for password, uh, I can actually say hash now. So that, that's good to go. So, but problem is it's, that's of type byte uh, slice. So instead we're gonna say uh, string. And now it's, it's something that we can save better. So the next part is, well, we want to insert this into Couchbase. So we're gonna say bucket dot insert. We're gonna, for the key of this document, we're gonna say account dot username and we're going to be saving the account structure and we're not giving, we're not going to give it an expiration time so it'll reside in the database until we manually delete it we're also not going to catch the error although in in a production scenario you will just in case well maybe that that username already exists or there was some kind of problem saving uh, but the next step we're going to do is we're going to clear out that account so that way we can read from it and we'll have a fresh variable to work with so we're going to say bucket dot get. We're going to pass in uh, nraboy, uh, which is my username. And we're also going to pass in, well, what do we want to store this, this data in? So we're going to pass in account, which is empty as of now. So this is a, an event where we are going to check the error. Uh, we're going to say uh, if there's an error, um, and we're going to say bcrypt dot compare hash and password. So the hash password is what's currently in our database. So the hash password is going to be uh, we we need it's going to be a string in our database. So we want to convert it into a, a slice of bytes. But we're going to say account dot password. So this is the hash coming from our database, and then we want to use a slice of byte uh, for a plain text password, which is going to be my password. So it's going to compare this plain text password against what's in our database. Again, we're not decrypting it. We're just comparing. Um, but if there was an error, uh, it won't be nil. Uh, but we're going to say fmt.println. Uh, and we're going to figure out what, what exactly that error is. Now, if there was an error, it means our passwords didn't match. And, well, the user probably shouldn't be logged in at this point. But Getting that document from the database based on the username is perfectly fine. You're just not going to proceed until you validate the password of that data. So I did save it. Uh, let's go ahead and try to run it. So I'm going to say uh, go run dot go. It's going to run the application. No errors, which is good. So if I go to my database now, I click documents and I click uh, this one document with the key and boy, which is my username, you can see that there is in fact a password there. It's not plain text. This is some some kind of hash. It's it's not some, if somebody were to hack into your database and see this, they, they probably wouldn't get very far. Um, and it did run. Uh, there, no errors were printed out. Let's go ahead and delete that document. We'll try to run it again. Uh, but this time our passwords won't match. We'll go ahead and, and run it. Uh, so hash password is not the hash of the given password. So it did fail this time um, because, of course, our passwords didn't match. The plain text versus what was stored in the database, which is just my password without the dollar, without the one. 
Uh, so bcrypting is very easy to do, and it's it's it definitely a step in the right direction when it comes to protecting sensitive data like passwords in your application. It's great for creating user profile stores and things like that.